All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rekakwadash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone. Much spread to the brothers laboring worldwide in truth and sincerity. And salutations and blessings to the hopeful elect. <clears throat> Believing on the word, say Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. And, um, just came across this article a few minutes ago on End Times Headline, where it says, National Grid warns of three-hour blackouts coming this winter to combat, combat gas shortage. All right? And if you've been watching, you see what OPEC <clears throat> has now cut uh, a certain amount, I want to say 18 billion or 18 million barrels of gas, of oil, excuse me. And what is that going to cause? It's going to cause, you know, uh, higher gas prices. Okay. It's also going to cause the shortage of heating oil. All right. And I found out that a byproduct of oil is natural gas. Okay. You already have the Nordstrom, you know, uh, being sabotaged. So, these are the things, the calamities that Yahweh Shah said he was going to bring upon Esau in these last days to bring his kingdom down. All right. <clears throat> now, I also have a video by Dabu7 that I'm going to play. All right. This is Dabu7. A heads up here for what could be more rolling blackouts going into the winter. And obviously, if this happens, people are going to start to freeze. It's not going to be a good situation. And we've seen worldwide that these blackouts have been going into motion. We just had 140 million people in Bangladesh get put into the dark. We've had several countries see these outages. And here in America, throughout the summer, they were hitting us with rolling blackouts. And in the UK, they're putting out the warning here that... These blackouts could happen in terms of prioritizing heating. And they're <coughs> blaming this all on gas shortages. This could stretch far and wide. This could hit every country. We've already seen what all of this has done throughout Europe. Multiple countries having problems and issues. And then the whole thing with the Nord Stream pipeline. Hmm. When it comes to the United States... They've put the warning out for years now that there could be this dark winter coming. It just seems like at some point here, one's going to jump up and be very bad. And it may catch some folks by surprise. You want to have a plan. Huh. If you don't have a way to heat your home going into this winter, it's something that you should definitely think about. This time of the year, heading into, into winter, into that time of the year where temperatures are dropping... This is definitely top of the list. The wood-burning stove, something that burns wood, coal, to keep the house warm. And I know that they're saying that coal is outlawed here and there, and that you can't burn it and do this and that. But even in the UK, they're saying that what is what is the emergency backup that they're falling back on for everyone here? And they're admitting it. Coal generators. They said they have to operate them or otherwise everything would be in the dark and freezing. Imagine that. And that's just how they want everyone here in America to be when they don't want you to sell the coal and they shut down coal country flat out while they continue to sell it to some of the biggest consumers like China. And they ain't saying a dang word about climate anything to them while doing it, while they zip around on the private jets and everything else in the scam that you live in. Join me for the live streams next week, Monday and Friday. All right. You see it. <clears throat> the things that our Lord, Yahweh Shah said he was going to bring upon the world, these plagues, right? And this article, it says, households and businesses across the UK could face planned power cuts this winter. 
if the country is unable to import electricity supplies from Europe, the national grid has won. It says the utility company responsible for distribution of energy unveiled its plans to ration supplies as the UK struggles to secure enough gas imports to fuel its gas-fired power plants. Europe is currently gripped by a major fossil fuel energy crisis, triggered Russia's tightening of gas flows to the continent as retaliation to sanctions imposed by the West over the invasion of Ukraine. Right? And all of these things are working in conjunction of your how about y'all shot bringing Esau down, man. All right, it's plain that we at the end of this kingdom. We at the end of this man's rulership, right? <clears throat> this is Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, and I'm gonna just start at the top and read down. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, say of the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper. For they are faithful and true. Yeah, they're set to come to pass. All right? Everything the Habashav Shah said was going to happen is going to happen. Point blank, period. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Yeah, incredulity, unbelief. All right? But you're going to soon find out, all right, <laughs> that it's your Habashav Shah is going to justify our words. All right, because we speak in his words. So your unbelief is not going to matter pretty soon. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. You best believe, all right, you're not having heat, okay, or having a grid, power grid, national grid shut down, all right, in the dead of winter, it's going to cause death. It's going to cause destruction. Why is the Lord doing this? For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hope for works are fulfilled. So the Lord let Esau build up all this iniquity, and now it's time for him to be judged. <clears throat> it says, Thus saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. And how the Lord speak it? Through the mouth of his prophets. All right? Condemning this wicked-ass kingdom. All right? Which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cries unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Right? When we make these video epistles, all right, are we groaning in the spirit? We crying out to Yahweh by Shout Shout to deliver us from this wicked man, from this bloody man, Esau Edom. Okay? And Job 9 and 24 tells us the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. So we need Yahweh by Shout Shout to deliver us out of this man's hand. Right? And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them. And receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Yeah. Pursuing to Joel 3 and 19. He says, uh, what Edom shall be a desolation. Uh, matter of fact, let's just go get it. Let's prove what Edom is. Right? Or Egypt. Um... Yeah. Let's go to the book of Joel. <clears throat> Chapter 3. Also, uh, Revelations 11. Deuteronomy 28. The land of our captivity. Right? You can see that Judah will be blessed. This is Joel 3 and 19. Egypt shall be a desolation. <coughs> Slaggy. And Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. For the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Beautiful. You see that? 
So the innocent and righteous blood is crying out to you how to destroy this place, man. All right. It says, <clears throat> Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land they were right. It's another reason how you know that this is modern Egypt, all right, spiritually Egypt, spiritually Sodom, because all the land is going to be destroyed there, all right, ancient Egypt is still there, okay, <clears throat> and what are uh, one of the plagues that the Lord hit Egypt with, darkness, all right, <laughs> essentially a blackout, this is the book of Psalms 105 and 26, he sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Yeah, they went and prophesied, okay, and prophesied what the Lord told them. And guess what? It came to pass. The same things are occurring now. He sent darkness, see that? He sent darkness and made it dark. And they rebel not against his word. See, the Lord is going to send darkness again. Okay. It don't matter if it's man-made. Guess what? It all goes back to your how about shot shot in the end anyway. This is wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 17, verse 1. For great are thy judgments and cannot be expressed. Therefore, unnurtured souls have erred. For when the unrighteous men thought to oppress the holy nation, they being shut up in their houses. See, you're going to be shut up in your house, man, when it's a blackout. You can't go anywhere. No street lights on. And you start hearing them wild animals in the woods, sounds you ain't never heard before, right? <clears throat> it says, they being shut up in their houses, the prisoners of darkness, and fettered with the bonds of a long night, laid their exile from the eternal providency. For while they supposed to lie hid in their secret sins, they were scattered under a dark veil of forgetfulness, being horribly astonished and troubled with strange apparitions. Yeah, the Lord going to send out these... <laughs> These demons, man, are to really fuck with you people mind, right? For neither might the corner that held them keep them from fear. Yeah, you're going to be so much in fear. You're going to have your face to the corner. You remember how uh, how they did it? Go get in the corner. Or well, you're going to voluntarily go get in the corner <laughs> when your how about shower shot causes the blackout. And he send those, those apparitions, those spirits. Come take you out, man. It says, for neither the might, <clears throat> it says, for neither might the corner that held them keep them from fear, but noises of waters falling down sounded about them, and sad visions appeared unto them with heavy counseling. You see that? No power of the fire might give them light. So you may have your lighter or a candle, but the Lord says it's not going to give you light. It says, neither could the bright flame of the stars endure to lighten that horrible night. So you can you imagine? <laughs> it's a big, bright, full moon shining. <laughs> and that light is not penetrating where you at, man. Oh, you are in complete darkness. See that? That's what the Lord has prepared for you people, man. The judgments of the Lord. It says, no power of the fire might give them light. Neither could the bright flames of the stars endure to light that horrible night. See that? And how much more now we're in the wickedest kingdom ever set up, man. Eh? All right? Well, wickedness is pushed forward. That's why the Lord said he ain't holding his tongue no more, man. He's ready. All right? And we're at the beginning stages of these things. It says... 
Only there appeared unto them a fire kindled of itself. <laughs> Very dreadful. For being much terrified, they thought the things which they saw to be worse than the sight that they saw not. See that? Oh, the Lord going to uh, put these terrors in these people's mind, man. All right? He's going to have them really in fear. Why? Because of their pride. In effect, you're going to dwell in torments. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing, man. We seeing the fall our enemy. All right? We seeing Yahweh Bashah step in on our behalf. It is 2nd Ezra, <clears throat> chapter 8 and verse 15. For many great miseries shall be done to them in the latter time, shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. See that? Many great miseries shall be done to them, right? The ones who, who subscribe to the way of Esau, okay? It says, let me see some. Salakia. I may want second Ezra's nine. Yeah, let's go to second Ezra's nine. And Salakia, I got a slight cold. Um, let me see something. <coughs> I believe a second is a nine, but let me let me make sure. <coughs> yeah, man. And the judgment of the Lord, I mean, they they're gonna be. Uh, yep, that's it. They're going to be hot and heavy, and, and ain't nobody going to be able to turn them back. All right? Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now I have abused my ways, and they that cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. That's right. You're going to dwell in torment when the blackout happens. All right, and, and your phone go dead because they say in a three hour man, who 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 can tell? All right, they can shut it down and it may not come back up, or MEP attack could happen. There's various ways the Lord could bring this judgment, but we know it's coming, and you're gonna dwell in torment. Ten, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And how do you know the Lord? How do you know your by shower shot matter of fact? Let's get that. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 9. How do you know the Lord? <laughs> you want to know him as we have known him. All right, what is that, Sirach 36? Yep, this is Psalms, chapter 9, and verse 16. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higia and Selah. So the Lord is known. By the judgment that he executed, man. All right? And these are one of the judgments that the Lord is going to bring forth. A blackout. All right? A darkness so dark. It's going to be, you, what they say, uh, so thick you can cut it with a knife. <clears throat> That's how that darkness is going to be. All right? You're going to be in torments. It says, for such in their life, uh, not wisdom, silence, Second Ezra 9 and 10. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. See, it's all about understanding. Okay, all about uh, believing the report. <laughs> These people not not hearkening to to the will of Yahweh by Shabbat All right, I seen something the other day about these fucking witches, man. All right, using the scriptures to justify themselves in their wickedness, man. You know, but the Lord gonna require that of you. All right, and I'm I might do a lesson regarding it, Lord willing. But you're gonna understand after the Lord take you down, right? It says the same. See the same 
must know it after death by pain. See that? You're going to know it after death by pain. When 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 uh <laughs> when those uh wild beasts come out and, from the woods and, and start roaming through the streets, all right, or a bell come knocking to your door. Hey man, the Lord again, He has various ways to bring judgment upon you people. All right. It says, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. So the this coming regime, all right, this coming rulership, all right, is only for the elect. All right, those are the ones who are going to be preserved from the said perils. All right, and when that blackout hit, the Lord is going to have those certain spirits protected. Why? Because he's going to be the one guiding them. All right, he's going to be the one showing them the way. Okay, let's see if we got something else. <clears throat> yeah, that should, that, that should do it. All right, that's going to be it for the lesson. Lord willing, it's been edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekat Kodash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone. Lord willing, come next you with another lesson. Till the next time I say Shalom, DTA, and a Bible Ball.